So what are you? A road racer? Or a motorcycle racer? Well, you can be a motorcycle racer and have absolutely no idea where the Isle of Man even is. But you can't be a TT racer unless you're willing to race a motorbike. We've asked this before and we'll ask it again. Are you a road racer or a short circuit racer? <laughs> Roads or short circuit racer? I, I honestly, uh, I don't know. I want to be both. I am a motorcycle racer. I'm, I'm both, aren't I? But I don't know. I'm, I've done, I've done both at a decent level. I'm both. He's just jumping on the bandwagon. Brooksy, fuck off! You're not a road racer. <laughs> I still have a road racer. Yeah, I'd probably class myself as a road racer. I suppose my best thing is I'm a road racer because Cause that's where I started. I started road racing. I'm still doing road racing now. You never change where you come from, is it? I always thought I was a decent short circuit rider. I do do quite a bit of short circuit. I do, I do enjoy the short circuit racing. You know, TT's just outweighed them all, so. The ultimate is the TT. For me, nothing is better than the TT. But this day and age now, I think, is pushing every rider to do a lot more because the level's got so high and it's got so competitive. 95% of the riders now are all out of the domestic championship. You know, they do BSB or a, a short circuit championship of some description. This season, we've been doing a lot more short circuit racing with the BSB and stuff, so I kind of think it's going to help me. I hope it's going to help me over here, you know, just have that bit of an edge. And you Hillier, Davo Johnson, uh, Dunlop, McGuinness, they're there to get up to speed for the TT. There's not too many sort of national road racers. There's, there's not really a thing anymore. There's, there's very little of us left. Everybody needs to be racing British Championship, racing something competitively before the TT. So when you get there, you are like 99%, you're ready, you're at your peak, you know, you're ready to go. Not sort of building into it because everybody else is at the peak, so you need to be there. Gone are the days when you could do nothing and turn up. When it comes to raw road racing talent, who has what it takes to have caught the eyes of the best road racers out there? Who is the most naturally talented TT rider? Who could just turn up? Wow, wow, that's a tough one, that one. Wow, we've got so many. I couldn't honestly tell you one rider. Oh, it depends. I mean, there's so many different ways of looking at this. That's a question I literally cannot answer. I don't know. I think it would have to be Bruce. Bruce Anstey. Bruce Anstey. Yeah, 100%. Bruce, Bruce Anstey, yeah. Yeah, I'd say Bruce Anstey. Yeah, Bruce Anstey, definitely. Oh, Bruce. Yeah, 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 yeah. I spend quite a bit of time with Clive Paget, and obviously, he, he's, if you cut him in half, it's just Bruce Anstey in the middle of him. And, you know, he's, he's an enigma. You've heard all of the um, stories, and Bruce is aware of this, but John calls him a freak. You know, he's, Flipping freak, that man. It's absolutely weird, or really, in a lot of ways. Because he's able to jump on and, and quickly achieve, you know, a great pace. And he, he'd be, he would literally be sleeping and then go and do 130 something mile an hour on your leg. Bruce could just walk up to a bike, just cock his leg over it with no practice whatsoever, no testing, and just bosh, bosh a result out. You know, it's, Pretty head scratching and frustrating at times, <laughs> just like what? And here is Bruce Anstey, 45 year old Bruce Anstey's perfect time for him, two o'clock start. He didn't get up till midday <laughs> and he's happy. Yeah, he likes a late in, does Bruce. If you're sleeping in the van 10 minutes before the start line and just be get off at night, you know, you can have that portion, I'll have the rest. <laughs> I think it's brilliant to be honest. I love the whole way he went about things, being chilled out, relaxed, laid back, and just gets out of bed, gets on his bike, hands everybody the ass. Goes well to bed. <laughs> I wish to God someone would do some psychology test on him just to see, because there can't be anyone else at like the top level of sport that is that laid back and that can. I'm sure. I I swear there was a switch on him somewhere that they used to just switch and no one knows. Just turned up, did his thing, was fast. Generally, one always on the podium. Someday again, when it clicked in his day, he was he was fast as well. So. Yeah, the quiet ones were always the, always the problem. You know, I've been passed by him on this track in places on the track that I never thought I would be able to get past that to the level I was at. I've gone, Jesus. But cleanly, and like, decisively. You could ride wheel to wheel with him, 
And then you could ride wheel to wheel 180 mile an hour, no problem. And you knew he was not going to do all daft, he was not going to cut you up or... For me, Bruce is kind of what road racing is about to a degree. It's kind of, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. It's a, it's a no truer saying, I don't think, with Bruce. Bruce Anstey, the number five Paget Honda, goes over the line to take his 10th TT win, his first in the Superbike class. And it's not just that, it's jumping from different bikes to different bikes. You know, he started on a two-stroke and he can, he can ride a 500 Grand Prix bike round here fast, you know what I mean? It's just... And rides any kind of bike, you know, from a super bike to a 600 to a 250. He's got it all nailed, hasn't he? He's just supremely talented. Bruce, can you believe it? Finally, the big job on the big bike. No, I just can't believe it. We've been waiting for years for this one. Like I say, I won 250 races, 600 races, super stock races, and this is the one I wanted. That's why it happened. <laughs> Yeah, he's a special guy, like, and doesn't get enough recognition. Not that he wants the recognition, because that's the last thing he'd want. He doesn't want that, which is which probably makes it cooler, really. But um, you would just never believe what that man's done. And I think he excelled on on road circuits, and from what I'm hearing, he he could have been amazing on circuits as well. You know, Bruce is known as a road racer, but. If you can ride a road race, you can ride a short circuit. He just never, he lost some of those opportunities. You know, there were many other things that Bruce was great at, including BMX champion in New Zealand. And, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's pretty good at anything he puts his hand to. You know, and he's not only, not only is he that, he's, the, the illnesses he's had are off the charts. To conquer all the personal health challenges that he's had, another guy, you know, that's another comeback hero, isn't it? You know, to come back from, you know, really bad, you know, illness, cancer. And... Now, I've said it many times, if Bruce hadn't had his illnesses over the years, because you know, Bruce was ill first time in his 20s. Tumour after tumour, or whatever he has with his, his cancer, and then he just batters us all again. <laughs> One of the most emotional and greatest wins I think that we've ever had was Bruce's comeback to achieve and win the 219 Classic TT. This is so much, not just for Bruce, but for so many people, such an inspiration. Just a few months before that, Bruce wasn't even able to walk, you know, it was like um, quite incredible. Like if the man had been off a bike for 10 years, he'd just get back on and go as fast as he'd ever gone. Like it's some serious talent and... It's just like nobody can work it out, how he can, how he can just do that. Just literally got on the bike and then there was something in him that that was what he was supposed to do. Yeah, real top man, and I, I, I have a lot of respect for Bruce. But yeah, naturally talented is 100% the category that he falls into very easily. Bruce is probably the most naturally talented rider. And lots of naturally talented riders are very unlucky. It's a close one, really, because uh, he didn't... He was taken away too soon, really. But David Jeffries was absolutely, unbelievably, naturally talented. He was just a big, massive, cuddly, hairy teddy bear. And I just remember him not looking like a TT racer and him getting on a bike and it been. And he, he just was in command of whatever he got on. You know, a big guy and he just put it exactly where it wanted to be. It, it, was like, it was like he had something else, something, something that everyone else didn't have. He sort of defied what racing was about, fun. You know, he'd have a beer, he'd have a pizza, he'd have a bag of chips, he'd have a curry, you know, he just jumped on his bike and did amazing things. David Jeffries over the line and he gets a new lap record and it's 125 miles an hour. I think the TT lends itself to people like that. I think it lends itself to natural talent over a lot of other things. You've got to give a nod to a bloke like Steve Islop as well, ain't you? You know, he just made it look effortless. Steve Islop. The 11-time Isle of Man TT winner, twice British Superbike champion, British 250cc champion. And rode a lot of different variations of bikes through a, a long period of time. Steve Hislop and it's history. A win for Hislop and a win for Norton. In terms of being a natural rider, an ability, the smoothest rider. You know, he's, he's definitely one of the greats. Some have come close. I know you, you're talking Anstey and Jeffries and people like that, but all time, Steve Hislop.
people will always have their favourites. In the good old days, you'd get up in the dark, probably about four in the morning, have a cup of tea and jump on the bike for a lap of morning practice before the birds had even jumped out of bed. Not so anymore. The depth of talent is simply massive. Who are the favourites from today's golden age? Who has that special something? There are so many of them, you know. Uh, you only have to watch and look and um, understand the hand-eye coordination, the recollection of where they want to be. Yeah, I, I admire them all. You know, I've met different riders in different days have been incredible. You know, when it was all on the day, just brought something out of the bag straight away and it's just because of talent. Everyone that's on the grid is probably, not, you could argue, they're naturally talented because it's quite a specialist thing riding around the TT course. Because the course is so diverse, it allows you to play to your strengths, whatever they may be, whether that be a bike strength or a U strength. There's so many areas where even if you're not as good in this particular area, you can make it up over here. You know what, they're all good, aren't they? There's loads of decent riders. I, I wouldn't want a single one out because there's all good lads floating about in there. And of course, I'd like to say our guys, and you know, certainly Dave is exceptionally natural. New kid on the block, <laughs> so every, who everyone's talking about at the minute. Another natural talent, like you say, you can ride any bike, whether it be a motocross bike, a supermoto bike, a super bike. Whatever he gets on, he's at the front, and absolutely he's going to be one to, to look out for in the future. The ones I like are the smooth ones. Um, Michael Rutter. Watch Michael Rutter. Okay, he's maybe a top six rider now. You know, he just enjoys it. You know, he gets on, he gets on, there and enjoys it. And even in, even though he knows he's, he's not now, you know, in the in the hunt, he's still there or thereabouts. So even at his age, which I think is truly amazing. I have this thing with Molly Man who keeps going on about how old he is and he's still saying, but you, you're still going as fast as you ever were. So you're not getting slower. You just. You're still going, you're still fast. John McGuinness is also as well, you can't not say that and not say that. John is just inch perfect. There's been so many natural talented riders. I think McGuinness is another one who is like super natural, just. He has the odd couple of British Championship rounds beforehand, does the North West 200 TT and he's on the, on the ball. But still in terms of natural, so easy on the eye. Really great rider to watch. You know, really, John is superb. James Hillier. Hillier, yeah, for sure. Do you know the talent thing, and I'm not trying to talk myself down or, or talk myself up, I don't feel I was born any different to a lot of, a lot of people. You know, I, I do look at some guys and I think there is an element of natural talent there, but it's, it depends on, on what you want and how much you want it, and, then, and also what you're prepared to do to get there, I suppose, you know, because it's not like Tiger Woods picked a golf club up and straight away start, you know, it, these things, it takes time doesn't it? and determination to achieve, I guess. It's, um... you know, people think that, oh, natural talent is, oh, can you drag your elbow at full lean angle in the corner? Like, you know, if you give any person long enough time on a bike and repeat the process over and over and over and over again, you know, some people pick it up really quickly and some people, you know, will take more time, but eventually anyone can do the same thing I can do, you know. I don't know what Josh, like his company, I just like listening to I think natural, ability is hard to define. I don't know, he's obviously semi-eccentric somewhere like him. Josh, isn't he? Something... Josh is a, is a really good rider and um, top rider at British Championship, been in World Championship, like he knows how to ride a bike and he'll be there or thereabouts as well. You know who's actually naturally talented? Because I, I know is Dean Harrison. Dean Harrison, you know, he, he, you know he, on his outlap, no one could touch him, he just goes, out and he's the fastest we've ever seen. He's like a scully cat. He comes in, wow, and he's gone. You know, I think Dean's quite quite a natural talent because he hasn't come from much of a racing background. He hasn't done a whole lot of racing. You know, he started racing to come here and. Well, I always wanted to race a bike. I had to start at 19 because I didn't have any money. I had to save some quids up and then buy a bike and go racing. And I only started racing. I wanted to do the TT obviously because I've been here with my dad racing the side car for so many years. Uh, you grow up around the TT and you think, do you know what, I wouldn't mind having a go at that. Because he's another one that has got no idea how he is fast or Dean's naturally talented, but to see him thing, he's 
fucking determined. I think Connor is really talented in that sense, and natural talent has got to be the likes of Connor. He he loves it, you know, it's his office, you know, puts a leg over but He's not the smallest guy, you know, even when I see him, he's up here, you know. But he, he's, he, yeah, he does have natural ability, absolutely, Connor Cummins. I always kind of joke around with Connor as well, I said it doesn't really matter how much racing you do beforehand, you're going to get to the TT and you're still going to show a lot of people up. He just switches it on when he needs to switch it on and I, I think that's impressive because I, I don't, I can't do that so much, I need to get myself up to speed and um, build up to it. I can't just get on and go fast, you know. I want to say the same about Hickman. I didn't say Hickey, though. Hickey's very natural. You know, it's Peter Hickman on, on, on any bike. You know, Peter Hickman's come and started racing the TT not that long ago, and he's one of the sort of dominant riders. This feels that he belongs, you know, puts a leg over it and he belongs on, on that on that two wheels machines. He doesn't say it, but I know with a swagger. He walks to the bike and he's like, he's got it. He's got one hand on the trophy if nothing goes wrong. You know, when he passed me in the senior and then, well, all the races he passed me, he just looked good and it looked easy and everything was working for him and everything was lined up and the planets were lined up and I just thought he's enjoying himself. Maybe it's controlled aggression. You know, you see back wheels stepping out and what have you, but it's all under control with Hickman. And I think maybe with Dunlop as well now. I don't know if it would be a natural talent or not, I don't know. It's wherever I lose up and maybe a wee drop of talent, I'll do it in a wee bit of aggression, I'm not sure, but, uh, or a bit of stupidity. I'm not quite sure how it works, but I don't know. It's probably an answer for somebody else, really. If natural ability is so hard to define, then maybe, just maybe, it's all in the DNA. Obviously, the Dunlop family are, are, are a cut above when it comes to outright raw talent. Uh, of course, all the Dunlops, of course, are pretty natural. You know, I don't think you money can buy sitting there with a, with a book to teach you anything about road racing. I think you, you, you either have it or you don't. You've got the likes of, again, like Joey. You know, he's most natural, I suppose. Down the bottom of Bray Hill. Here's your man, Joey Dunlop, then. That is a famous helmet on a famous mark. Yeah, and then you've got the likes of Robert Dunlop. Robert Dunlop, a dream to come to the TT this year and is in the process of leading this ultra lightweight TT. I think William was one of them people who had been, you know, see if the day clicked for him. He was shit hot fast. I'm not just saying that because my brother, but he, he was, when it clicked, he, you know, he had the talent just to be so fast. I don't say this, I don't know whether you didn't say it. I believe that William was probably a better bike rider than Michael, but Michael wanted it a lot more. Yeah, no doubt about it. William was, was naturally talented, clearly from a very talented family. Obviously, Joey, as Michael, on all of them different machines, be able to adapt to all them different machines and win on them all is clearly a special talent, clearly. Michael Dunlop, he has this nickname, The Bull, and I still maintain I was the guy who gave him that nickname. I remember him racing in the Irish roads. He'd be kicking up dirt at the side of the road when others were going nowhere near. But how precise and how great a rider Michael is. Yeah, Michael's another one, it's the same. Yeah, he doesn't ride that much really throughout the year. Like unlike myself, I ride loads. I ride all the time in the British Superbike Championship or Northwest or whatever it may be. I'm doing all sorts of stuff all year. I've definitely thought about it myself in that you know I look at what I've done. You know, in just to say for in in one preseason. You know, like I mean, I'm in good health. I'm in good shape. I've done a lot of training. You know, I've done so many days on the track, and then I'm sure Michael won't be angry with me saying but then you know I see Michael turn up and he looks a little bit out of shape and it's the first day he's been on a bike for the year so I think about all the things that I've got to get me fully prepared and and what I'm going through and then I think well if I just turn up today then I probably wouldn't even be able to match what he's doing. Michael's not really somebody who seems to do that much does it a little bit here and there before the Northwest cracks on at the Northwest, cracks on at the TT. It's always at the front. Super talented, super fast. 
yeah, I think there must be some natural talent there. I mean, the, the series of eliminations would, would, would tell you that, yeah, there's something special. I suppose you do dream about winning, really, don't you? Yeah, you probably didn't dream about it. But I'm sure once you get one, you want more, so it's... Uh... I can't believe I've won a TT. Actually, no, even if someone says it to me, I'm like, are you sure? I'm happy with my toll, I'm happy with what I've achieved, I can't... You know, it's been, been epic. I mean, the, the man who's going to smash through that is Michael Dunlop. And that's not me having to go with any other TT rider, but he's, he's earned... No one can say he's had any of them handed to him. Where we are right now is one race away from, from equaling that to, to Joey. So in our time and our life now, we are really witnessing something special. Well, he would be the most successful rider on the TT course. He, 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 I said he'd be the king of the mountain then, wouldn't he? Not his uncle, you know, and people have talked about it a long time. Joey's a king, and Michael would be the king then, wouldn't he? Because all his life, his whole life, his uncle has been the best TT rider ever. And now that's going to happen to him.